When I was a kid, it felt like my dad was obsessed with getting to the airport on time. It would start a week ahead of our flight. Sometimes even more. On the day of the flight, if the taxi we'd scheduled for 4 a.m., already two hours earlier than needed, wasn't the by 3.59, he'd get really agitated. Then we'd always get there so early, that nothing would be open yet. And he'd start screaming at, people, the folks who worked there, my mom. He was clearly in a lot of distress, and when you'd try to talk him down and explain it was okay, he'd brush you off. He was in the right, and we just couldn't see it. He did other things that felt similar, he'd always worry that he'd left the stove on or that he left the iron on. And my brother and I started checking these things when we were getting, ready to go anywhere, in hopes that my dad wouldn't worry if we took care of it. But it never helped. My dad's anxiety permeated lots of things, and caused a lot of chaos. As a kid this was really hard on me. I was embarrassed all the time. Other people thought my family was strange. My friends didn't want to come over to my house to hang out. It didn't know anyone else who was like this and it felt, like there was something wrong with my family. Now, I recognize my dad had a severe anxiety disorder. He never sought treatment for it. In the 1970s, no one talked about mental health. Especially not men's mental health. And even today, the stigma and silence remains as a doctor, I see this all the time, I regularly have patients who are clearly struggling with anxiety, but don't know it, or have a hard time accepting that diagnosis. It's not surprising, our whole lives, we receive messages about how mental illnesses aren't real illness. Why can't you just stop worrying? Dot don't be such a snowflake. He's just so unstable. She's crazy. What do you need, a trigger warning? Why can't she just get it together? But I'm here to tell you that anyone with symptoms of mental illness is, experiencing something that is as real as high blood pressure. And if you had high blood pressure, no one would tell you to just ignore it, because it'll go away. That could lead to unnecessary suffering. And perhaps, injury to your heart or your kidneys. With high blood pressure and with mental health issues, ignoring problems risks making a lot of things worse. Today, we're talking about, something we all experience from time to time, but can sometimes escalate to a medical condition, anxiety. Think about a time when you were feeling really anxious. What was making you feel that way? Maybe a big test? or a serious conversation you had to have with someone important to you, or when you've had to drive at night during a rainstorm. How did that anxiety feel in your body? Did your heart start to race? Did you start to sweat? Anxiety isn't just happening in your mind, it's full body reaction. So how does it all work? So anxiety is generally a form of fear or a form of worry. You are afraid that something is going to happen or you are just increasingly worried, maybe apprehensive. You're not sure if something bad is going to happen, you are maybe overly focused on their expectation of some kind of outcome, like you just can't stop thinking about something. One thing I sometimes hear from people is, um, is that, oh, well, you know, you should just, just be less anxious so just try to be less anxious. But I mean, you know, that in many ways sounds like trying to say to someone why don't you just have less high blood pressure or, you know, why don't you have just, less abnormal cells in your uterus? It's exactly the case. It's just that we don't think about feelings and emotions in that way. For some people it's actually part of your genetic makeup, um, or there was something in your environment where you were predisposed to so many circumstances where you were alert. And if you can't control your environment, you certainly can't control your genes. You, 
can't just get rid of your anxiety just like your cells or your